Given the domestic and global environment, Kenya's economic growth was robust in 2012. However, this is still an underperformance compared to the sub-Saharan and East African community. I, Uhuru Kenyatta. Unlike 2007, Kenya had a peaceful election in March 2013, thus undergoing a smooth transition of political power. This in turn has kept the economy on track. We have had a transition to power, uh, you know, a change of power that was very peaceful. That's a very clear signal to the international community and especially investors that now uh, Kenya has addressed one of the most lingering questions that we have had in the past. Our growth at, during the year of election goes down. This time around I think you will not see that and it's partly because of, uh, it's mainly because of what uh, we have done in terms of the political reforms. Growth will be much higher than what was expected and what we saw in 2012, for example. And we're expecting growth to be around 5.7 in 2013 and 6% in 2014. Uh, it's not the 10% that the government was expecting as part of the Vision 2030. So the, the report then moved as a second part to look at what would be the policy recommendation for the country to reach the 10% growth. Though Kenya's economy has great potential, it has only managed to achieve short-lived periods of high growth. And this is attributed to Kenya's inability to sustain a growth curve for long. While an increasing number of African countries have reached middle income status, Kenya still lags behind. The problem with Kenya is that we've been going faster than we slow down, faster than we slow down. That is because Kenya is running on one engine, being driven by consumption. We need to be an investment destination. Kenya needs to be driven, the growth of Kenya needs to be driven by investment. The growth of Kenya needs to be driven by more export, what we call net exports, that is export minus imports, which has been dragging Kenya low. Kenya's economy can best be compared to a car driving at 80 kilometers per hour in third gear. It has not been able to shift gears to grow at a higher speed. One of the major barriers standing in the way of economic breakthrough has been the high level of inequality. Kenyans are on average more, more healthy, they're more educated, um, and are enjoying better living conditions permitted by increased access to consumption opportunities like, like mobile phones and uh, other, other consumer goods. But still, the, the number of, of, of people living in conditions of hardship without access to water, without access to electricity, without access to decent sanitation remains quite large. Ironically, the gap between the rich and the poor widens parallel to economic growth. Kenyans associate poverty with an inability to meet basic human needs and a lack of cash income. Among the poorest of Kenyans, 99% live without electricity, 80% share living space with two or more people, 64% live without access to improved sources of water, with over 70% having difficulty obtaining documents or permits, household services and help from police. I am Makabwa Johnston, the principal of Soweto Academy. Soweto Academy is located in the slums of Kibera. Most of the people around here are completely poor people. They live in these shanties where we call them 10 by 10 kind of rooms. And you know this is a room that someone is staying there with his own children. Some of these rooms are even leaking and you know especially during rain season, such a person will always be uh, subjected to environmental uh, torture. 2005 was the last um, time Kenya did a household survey to measure poverty, um, but there hasn't been one since. So we don't have a good sense of um, how poverty has changed since 2005. In 2005, 47% of the population was estimated to be poor. Uh, representing about 16 million people. And what we, what we gather there sort of is, is that the range of poverty uh, mo most recently is between 34 and 42 percent. In urban areas, the poor are predominantly uh, self-employed, um, working uh, you know, with an inf in informal businesses that tend to be small, so street vending, striving to, to make a living. 
kwa siku nimesema naweza pata kitu kama 300 hivi. Mimi hali ya kujika kama lakini si vizuri vile sababu labda utapata kazi ya pesa kisa hizi tunatumia ile ya unapata na unakula lakini sasa ile mambo zingine inakuwa ni vigumu sana kuyatekeleza. Geographically we find that it's the north and northeastern areas that have the highest poverty rates. Um, and this reflects Kenya's historically unbalanced growth. However, given patterns of population density, um, if you look at where the largest numbers of poor people are, they are concentrated in the higher potential agricultural areas in western Kenya, in the central highlands, and in the coast around Mombasa. <laughs> wa mahidi la siyo ya kuhuza, itu mahidi tutu dogo ya kukura. Hapa kiabu, basikili diyo wegi kuliko wa tajiri. Hawa matajiri, wa niwa dogo na wako na, wako na vitu vya otu ya wezi kukusaidia. Sasa we, basikili, basikili liwete kwao, ufanya kazi diyo ulipo biyabili. Biyabili hawa wezi kufanya na yukitu, diyo uga, diyo mafuta, diyo sukari, diyo basomo ya, ya watoto. For Kenya to achieve the World Bank's Global 2030 Poverty Eradication Target, it needs to reduce poverty by 2% each year. This is only possible if the poor benefit to a disproportionate extent from economic growth both through economic opportunities and by ensuring that safety nets are adequately buffering the vulnerable forms of shocks. With poverty, you have no access to services like health, you have no access to education, and uh, these are the drivers of growth. You need a healthy population to be able to participate in, uh, in economic activities in the country. Kenya has the potential to achieve economic breakthrough. It is time to accelerate growth. It is time to reduce poverty. It is time to shift gears.